Congratulations on the purchase of your new Sage Oil Vac Gear Oil Exchange system. We're confident you'll be satisfied with its performance, efficiency, and clean operation. This video is provided to help train technicians how to use the Gear Oil Exchange system safely and efficiently. Along with this video, you should have received an operations manual. Please review the manual to familiarize yourself with the individual components of the system. Included are visual inspection recommendations to help you check all components prior to travel or operation. Please note the safety items highlighted in the manual. Be sure to emphasize these to anyone who will be operating the gear oil exchange system. Okay, let's get started. First, start up the compressor engine. Begin by moving the fuel valve lever to the on position. If the engine is cold, move the choke lever to the closed position. Turn the engine switch to the on position. Next, turn and hold the key in the start position until the engine begins running. If you started the engine with the choke open, close the choke once the engine starts. The next step is to create vacuum in the new product tank. We will show you how to vacuum fluid from a tote and a barrel. First, make sure the vacuum pressure gauge in the new product tank reads zero. If there is vacuum or pressure in the tank, relieve the vacuum or pressure by disconnecting the air hose if necessary and open the ball valve at the air intake. After the vacuum or pressure is released, close the air intake valve. Next, attach the jumper hose from the used product tank to the quick connect vacuum fitting. Now open the air compressor tank drain valves. Place the appropriate three-way valve in the vacuum position. Observe the vacuum pressure gauge and continue until approximately minus 20 inches of vacuum is reached. Once this is achieved, place the three-way valve in the normal air compressor position and stop the compressor engine. Stand the barrel on end with plugs up. Remove the seals and bungs from the barrel. Insert 2 inch male cam into 2 inch barrel bung and use channel lock pliers to tighten the male cam to prevent leakage. Insert 3 quarter inch venting apparatus into 3 quarter inch bung and tighten so the handle extends over the side. The handle will be used as leverage to tip the barrel onto its side. Secure the drum end of the new fluid transfer hose to 2 inch male cam on the barrel using the cam lock levers. Verify that the appropriate product tank fill nozzle valve is closed. Remove the cam lock cap from the appropriate tank fill nozzle. Attach the new fluid transfer hose to the tank fill nozzle. Secure the connection using the cam lock levers. Using the venting apparatus handle, tip the barrel to a 30 degree angle or until new oil is visible. At this point, a second technician needs to open the 2 inch ball valve on top of the new product tank. As new oil is vacuumed into the new oil tank, the barrel technician needs to slowly lower the barrel to the ground. Place a pig mat or oil mat under the barrel to catch any leaks. When the barrel is completely empty, close the 2 inch ball valve on the new oil tank. Stand the barrel up. Remove the transfer hose from the 2 inch cam on the barrel. To vacuum from subsequent barrels, Make sure to close the 2 inch cam on the new oil tank before removing the transfer hose from the barrel. When the new oil tank is 90% full, close the 2 inch ball valve on the new oil tank. Remove the transfer hose connector from the barrel and quickly invert and elevate the hose. Reopen the 2 inch ball valve to vacuum remaining oil from the hose. If the new oil tote is not equipped with the male cam, retrieve the male cam adapter included with your gear oil exchange system and install on the tote. 
Attach the end of the transfer hose to the tote using the cam lock levers to secure. Open the valve on the tote and then open the 2 inch valve on the new product tank. If the tote is empty and the new oil tank is 90% full, repeat the above procedure to empty the hose. First, locate the power cord and connect it to a 120 volt power source. The water pump will turn on automatically. Open the valve on the propane tank. Push the on-off button on the control pad of the heater. Adjust the temperature up until the red in-use light is illuminated to show that the heater is working correctly. When the light goes off, adjust the temperature up 10 degrees. The light will come back on. Repeat the prior steps until the recommended temperature is reached. Refer to the Renai Owner's Manual if Error 11 is displayed on the control panel display. When the water is at recommended temperature, new oil filtering may begin. Reset the flow meter at the top of the new oil tank by pressing and holding the Reset button until 0.00 is displayed. Push the black On-Off button located on the front of the filtration system to the On position. Begin by checking the pressure vacuum gauge on the new product tank. If vacuum exists, open the air inlet valve to relieve vacuum. Next, connect the air hose from the compressor to the new product tank. Close the compressor tank drain valves. Place the three-way valve in the normal air compressor position. Start the compressor by following the prior steps. Allow the air compressor to bring the product tank to an optimal air pressure of 60 to 65 PSI. The compressor will reduce engine speed when the compressor tank pressure reaches optimum pressure. Turn off the compressor. Loosen the reel locks on the side of the hose reels. Pull enough hose out to reach the winch. Connect the winch cable to the new and used oil hose pulls, the flush fluid hose pull if desired, and a carabiner. Place the Sage Oil Vac gearbox adapters, the short hose with magnet and meter, and two pipe wrenches in a transport bag. Connect the bag to the winch. Now you are ready to move the hose and equipment to the top of the tower. Verify that there is a proper amount of slack in the oil hoses before engaging the winch to prevent rubbing or pulling of the hoses. Engage the winch to lift the fluid hoses and other equipment. Gradually feed the hoses from the reels to keep pace with the tower winch and avoid straining or pulling on the hoses. Sage Oil Vac provides several gearbox adapters. The up tower technician should select and install the correct gearbox adapter along with a 1 inch male cam adapter. Use one pipe wrench to hold the ball valve located at the bottom of the gearbox and use the other pipe wrench to remove the plug. Select and install the proper gearbox adapter. Identify the used oil hose and connect the hose to the gearbox adapter. Secure the connection using the cam lock levers. Then, open the ball valve on the gearbox and valve on the used oil hose. Used oil is now being evacuated to the gear oil exchange system on the ground. The evacuation is complete when the gearbox appears to be empty of oil. Listen for suction through the gearbox and at the trailer. Upon completion of the evacuation, close the ball valve located on the gearbox, but do not close the hose ball valve at this time. 
Disconnect the used oil hose from the gearbox and allow the vacuum to continue to remove used fluid from the oil hose. The ground technician should verify the selector switch is in the neutral position. The tower technician should connect the short hose to the gearbox. Connect the flush hose to the short filtration hose. Reset the meter to zero by pressing the reset button. The ground technician should start the pump engine. Once the pump is running, move the selector switch to flush oil. Turn the pressure regulating valve clockwise to increase the flow through the main fluid line to the gearbox. Then, turn the valve until the pressure level on the gauge is between 500 and 950 psi. When the appropriate amount of flush fluid is present in the gearbox, the tower technician contacts the ground technician to shut off the pump by moving the selector switch to the neutral position. After the pump has been shut off, close both ball valves on the hose and gearbox. Disconnect the short hose from the gearbox and elevate to prevent drips. Next, remove the short hose from the flush fluid hose and insert in the opposite end. Use the cam lock levers to secure the connection. Follow the procedure to establish a vacuum in the flush oil tank. Open the 1 inch ball valve near the flush fluid pump. This will allow the flush fluid to bypass the pump and go back into the flush tank. Connect the long hose to the gearbox. The flush fluid will be vacuumed back into the original flush tank. Allow all of the flush oil to be vacuumed from the hose and allow the tank to drop to zero vacuum. After all the flush oil is removed and the tank vacuum reaches zero, close the 1 inch ball valve on the hose. Remove the hose from the gearbox and replace the cam lock cap using the cam lock levers to secure. The flush fluid hose may be lowered and rewound on the hose reel during the next stage of refilling with fresh oil. The ground technician should verify the selector switch is in the neutral position. The tower technician should identify the new fluid hose and connect the hose to the gearbox adapter. Use the cam lock levers to secure. Reset the meter to zero by pressing the reset button. Open the ball valve on the gearbox. Now open the ball valve on the new fluid hose. The ground technician starts the pump engine. Move the selector switch to gear oil. Turn the pressure regulating valve clockwise to increase flow through the main fluid line to the gearbox. Turn the valve clockwise until the pressure level on the gauge is between 500 and 950 psi. Continue the pumping process until the tower technician indicates the gearbox is full. The ground technician will stop the pumping process by moving the selector switch to the neutral position and or turning off the pump engine. While the hoses are being lowered, the ground technician should keep pace with the lowering winch by winding the product hoses onto the product hose reel. Uniformly, roll the hose onto the reel by fanning or moving the hoses from one side of the reel to the other while rolling up. Once the product hoses have been completely lowered, place the ends securely in the containment pan and tighten the reel locks to prepare for travel. 